Okay guys, we're back with another episode of Tech Tuesday. And today, we're gonna be heading out to Canada Farms in beautiful British Columbia, where I will be going over the T-Factor on your ISOBUS equipped JBS spreader. Let's do it. The T-Factor is basically tons of material per revolution of the rear drive shaft that pulling on your floor chain. It's another way of basically defining density. So if you've got really heavy product, let's say wet cow manure, raw cow manure, something like that, you're gonna have more tons of material every time that rear shaft pulls on the floor chain into the beaters. If you've got really light material, you're gonna have less tons per revolution. So that's a quick rundown of the T-factor. Now, why is that important? Well, beyond having scales on your spreader, it uses that T-factor in between doing recalculations and measurements. So it's not just based on the steady decline of weight, it's counting how many times that rear drive shaft turns round and round for every X amount of material. Usually our machines are set up for around one ton of material per calculation. Now, so just so you guys know, that T-factor is gonna ever change. If your pile has a bit of a wet, more dense section in it, the T-factor is gonna rise a little bit because it's noticing that more material came off during that one ton recalculation. Also, we can actually set up presets. So we can go ahead in the monitor, which I'll show you here, and you can have a bunch of different products. And we're also, at the end of this video, gonna put up a bunch of charts based on roughly what kind of material you're using, are you using a wide body or an E-series spreader, along with are you running verticals or a hurricane? All right, I'll show you about the products we got going on here. Okay, from your main spreading screen, you're gonna push this little circle made of arrow button, and then go to this symbol right there. This is your product setup page. Currently, we have light product set up at about three ton to the acre. The T factor for this particular setup was 0.250. Now, you can go ahead and click right here and go over, let's say, medium product. This particular customer was still spreading at three tons per acre, but the T-factor was much higher as that particular chicken litter was super wet. Then we go over to, let's say, a heavy product. We can edit this, let's say we want 10 tons per acre. And we know it's good and heavy, so it, a st good starting T factor would be 1.1, give or take. All right, you can save it like that. Now, if you have more than that, we can go over and start picking out custom ones. So yeah, let's say we've got another product. It's going to be a 20 ton rate, super heavy material. We'll start it at 1.2. All right, and we're gonna name this Heavy cow raw, there we go. So now we know when we go to spread heavy cow manure at a 20 ton rate, we've got a T factor of 1.2. Now, that being said, this T factor preset might also apply, let's say you've got the same cow manure, but you're only gonna do eight tons to the acre. The T factor remains the same. As I mentioned before, T-factor is a representation of density, not necessarily application rate. So if you call me and said, hey MJ, I'm having some troubles, can you help me set up? I'm gonna be asking you, how heavy is this stuff? Like, do you have a 50 ton spreader and when it's fully loaded, it's 48 tons? Absolutely, that's heavy. So we would want a higher T-factor. We have some super light chicken litter. Like for example, we were running this spreader um, which is a 20 foot E-series, we were only getting like 15,000 pounds in the box, so like seven and a half tons. So we only ran the T-factor at 0.250 and it pretty much hovered right around there. One other thing I'd like to touch on when it comes to the T-factor is that if you haven't noticed already, it's going to tank at the end of the load. Reason being, as, as the manure height goes lower and lower and lower, you're getting less tons per revolution. So it's completely normal for it to drop all the way down to like less than 0.5, for example. Now, 
the system is designed to go and grab a hold of the T-factor from about halfway through that load and reapply it once you're reloaded. Unfortunately, occasionally, this doesn't always happen. So, I always let people know to double check what the T-factor is after you've reloaded first thing in the morning. This will help a lot of headaches because sometimes it just leaves it at that clean out and I'll get calls like, hey MJ, like we went to fire the spreader up for the first time this morning and it's, you know, hurricaning out the back of the spreader. Floor's running at full speed. Always my first question will be, what's the T-factor? It doesn't happen super often, but it's one of those quick little things that you can check to make sure the start of your day goes great. Another little tip when it comes to the T-factor and using automatic rate control is those of you who are running chicken litter, dry litter, anything like that, stuff that's like really fluffy and flowy, I highly recommend setting the tailgate at about two feet, three feet, in and amongst that range. With that said, you want to maintain the same gate height opening every time. So if you're not running the tailgate all the way up and you're running it at that two to three foot range, I recommend setting up a timer on your SCV that operates your tailgate. So let's say it's like three seconds. You just hit the button, it goes whoop, and it stops at the same height every single time. Thanks for watching. If you have a video idea that you'd like to see, drop it in the comments section below. And remember, the field's the limit.